Hey guys, welcome back. Kellen with Droid Life. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about Android 4.2. Since it hit AOSP or Android, the Android Open Source Project, we're going to start seeing Android 4.2 roll out to not only devices, but into your favorite ROMs. And we wanted to just make sure you knew all the new goodies and features and stuff like that so you can take full advantage of using it. So for those of you that ordered a Nexus 10, which I have here, or a Nexus 4 yesterday before they sold out, you're going to have Android 4.2 soon. If you own a Nexus 7, you already have it since the update started rolling out. So let's just make sure you know everything that's going on here. So first thing we want to talk about then is the lock screen. Now we did a previous video about the lock screen and uh, lock screen widgets and things like that along with multi-users. So we're just going to briefly talk about this. But the lock screen does differ a little bit between the device you're using. So on the big 10 inch tablet, you can see our lock screen now is just a lock here. Um, you do have a shortcut to Google Now down here, which is this little circle and you can swipe that up to get to Google Now. On the big tablet, there is no shortcut to get to the camera from the lock screen. Now on the phone, if we swipe over here, that will take you right into the, ca into the camera. So there is a way to get to it um, directly on the phone, just not on the tablet for whatever reason. And this, this tablet does have a rear camera, so we're a little surprised to see that. But the widgets on the big screen are a little bit different. Over here, you can see there's sort of a separate panel of lock screens, lock screen pages, basically, that you can flip through. Uh, obviously, if you want to delete those, it's just a long press, and you can delete or rearrange, add more, all that good stuff. So it's a little bit different. Um, if we look on the phone, you can see the pages are just pages. They're not like a separate... You can swipe that up and down for whatever reason. Uh, you can see they just look a little bit different. Obviously, this less less screen real estate is a key there. Um, if we look at the Nexus 10, you can see it's sort of a, just a switch up top. I don't know if this goes landscape in lock screen, does it? Yeah, it does. And so there you'll sort of get the panel, and it goes behind the lock button there. So a little bit different depending on the form factor we're going with here. Uh, but also, they've changed up multi-user. So if you notice these two circles down here at the bottom, I have two users set up. So there is a different user, and you can see it changes the wallpaper, or I just have me as the standard user. Now, once you set those up in... I actually sort of got that open. Let me show you how I get there, though. Settings, under Devices, there's an option for Users over here. And this is where you're going to manage your different users. And you can add a user up here with this button, set permissions, all that stuff for them. To quickly switch though, say you're on a web page or something and you want to switch to a different user, you can just pull your notification down and actually tap on your username. It'll take you to your lock screen then and let you choose the different user. So again, we've sort of seen this already. Again, I, I did a long video about this already, so we're not going to hang with it too much. So anyway, let's talk about the clock for a second. And to talk about the clock, I'm going to bring over the Nexus 7. So let's unlock that, and the new clock you can see right in the middle, it's now a full circle rather than the dotted circle. If we want to get to the new clock, we can tap on that, or we can go into our apps and tap on clock in there. Now this new clock app, you can set up alarms as usual. You can see there's just sort of a new UI to everything. You can also set up different cities, so if you want to have the city and say Albuquerque, or the weather in Albuquerque, not, not the weather, how about the time, since we're in a clock app, the time in Albuquerque or New York or anywhere across the world. Um, and then up top, we also have a few options. One is a stopwatch. So you now can set up a stopwatch or a timer. I'm sorry, this, is a, this would be a timer. Um, stopwatch is over here on the right. And basically, you just tap that to start it, tap that to stop it. And apparently, you can share time. I've never seen that before. Um, you can actually swipe between all of these as well. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Google's going with this new bold, the front two numbers of every clock fine sort of thin print the uh, back two numbers. And they've done this everywhere. Whenever there's time, you see they're sort of doing it all over. If we go to the lock screen, you'll notice it there too. It's okay to look at. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but hey, it looks clean, I guess. So that's the new clock. We now finally have a stopwatch and timer along with the ability to add multiple towns and cities. Kind of cool. Uh, let's talk about quick settings. So quick settings are a new thing that was introduced in Android 4.2, and they differ again between phone and tablet. So on your tablet, if you pull down on the left side, you get your notifications. If you pull down on the right side, you get your quick settings. On a phone, let's go ahead and pull this up, and let me clear out my notifications real quick. Oops. Okay, on a phone, if you pull down with one finger, 
there you'll get your notifications. If you pull down with two fingers, there you get to quick settings. So one finger notifications, two finger quick settings. Also, if you pull down with one finger, you'll see this little option over here. You can just tap that and that'll get you to quick settings as well. So you can just toggle that between the two. But again, quickly do it, two fingers. Now, if we pull out the big dog again, it's again, a little bit different than the Nexus 7, but way over here on the left is your notification. Way over here on the right is your quick settings. So they are separate menus on tablets. They're just sort of bundled together as one on the phone. All right, let's talk about camera briefly. So the camera, we're just gonna go ahead and go with the phone on this one. So if we unlock to the camera, here's a Galaxy S3. Um, let's talk about the normal camera first and we'll come back to what was just on my screen. So the camera, um, it's tap to uh, focus as usual. If you long press, you get some more options. You'll get HDMR, or I'm sorry, HDR mode. You can turn your flash quickly on and off. You can flip to your front camera if you'd like. You can go into other settings, and there's also a couple of scene modes in here. So you've got some, you got some flexibility in here. Um, if you tap this circle in the top right, that actually pulls that menu up, so you don't necessarily have to always do this long press thing. You could actually just tap that, and it'll be there. Uh, and then down at the bottom, we obviously have Photosphere, which is the new hot new photo trend for Google. So basically you set your phone up and you line it up flat with a uh, blue dot on your screen and then from there you rotate around and you find the blue dots. You guys should be able to see that a little bit on camera and those continue to go around and create a 360 degree photo. And so this is sort of how this works, and we'll just sort of stop there. If we hit stop, it renders it, and uh, we can swipe over and see how that's doing. It's rendering the pan around. But anyways, it takes three, you can actually do full 360 degree shots, upload those to Google Plus, have a lot of fun with them. Um, it's actually pretty neat, and we hope it catches on with some other devices. But if we go ahead and hit this Photosphere button, it sort of takes you in, and you can swipe around. Obviously, I took a tiny one, but so that's kind of cool. Um, they've really upped the camera software, which we're glad to see since the software in the past has not always been the best. It's also instant shutter, so if we go ahead and focus, you take instant photos. There you go. So it takes really fast photos as well. All right, let's talk about gesture typing for a second. So if we go ahead and pull up our Gmail app, and let's just start a new email. If we go into the compose here, so gesture typing is swipe essentially built into the Android keyboard, except it's a little bit smarter than swipe. So if I type in, I really love Gmail. And now if you looked closely at that, it's actually predicting each letter on the fly or keeping track of each letter on the fly, I should say. So I just swiped this or gesture typed this and it did that. So this is, and nope, and there we go. Awesome keyboard. So you can see how that works. Uh, very cool. It also predicts that you could just tap new words that are coming up. It works really well. I've never been a big swiper, but I do like what's going on with gesture typing in here. So now that we're in um, Gmail, though, let's talk about the new Gmail that's that works with 4.2. So new Gmail allows you to, you can swipe away messages. So if I just swipe that off, you can see it archived it. You can also change that to delete if you wanted to delete rather than archive. But a simple swipe will do that with you know any email. Then the other thing they've done is with attachments. Well, actually, before we get to attachments, pinch to zoom is finally here. So pinch to zoom in emails is here in 4.2, although you do have to enable that setting. Uh, but the other thing then I really like is how they're doing attachments now. So I've got a bunch of pictures in here attached and they show up as bigger thumbnails to actually see what the attachment is. If we go ahead and type on, or tap on those, it takes you to a big preview of it. And there's actually a menu up here and I could tap that and it'll allow me to save attachments. It'll actually it'll allow me to share them directly from the attachment as well. I can save one or save them all. You can swipe between these, check them all out. They've done a really nice job with attachments. The new Gmail 4.2, they seem like some minor tweaks, but they really are big time things that we're really excited about. All right, then the last thing I want to show you in this 4.2 walkthrough is if we go ahead and go into settings, 
let's look at this daydream feature that's been built in. So daydream is like when you dock your phone or set it on your desk, daydream can be set up to either pop up a clock automatically or the bean flinger, which I'll show you in a second. You can just do a colored sort of background. You can have currents pull up new articles and things. You can do pictures from your phone, photos, all that good stuff. So if we do the clock, I can just say start now. And this is what will appear if your phone was set to daydream with the clock on. And I believe it slowly moves around. If I touch it, it'll go away, so I'm going to not do that. But I believe it slowly moves around. Yeah, because if I touch it, it goes away. Anyway, that's how the clock works. Here is Bean Flinger. Now, if you follow Droid Life, you know this is the Easter egg and jelly bean. So if you had this docked on your desk, you could just sit here all day or on a conference call and swipe away beans. Very cool. And then, of course, there's colors, which is just a colored background, which sort of changes and orbs all over. And then you can do currents, and I don't have that set up right now, but it pulls in articles, photo frames, which pulls pictures from your device, all the stuff you would sort of expect. Um, then there's this thing on when to daydream. You can say while it's docked, while it's charging, or either. And I actually tried just plugging it in, and while charging, it didn't work. So I don't know if that means charging while in a dock, or what exactly that means. But anyway, that's daydream. And that's pretty much it. That's a 4.2 walkthrough. So we have 4.2 on a number of devices now, the Nexus 7, the Nexus 4, and the Nexus 10. And the, actually the GSM Galaxy Nexus has it as well. So we're going to start seeing this roll out again. It's coming to ROM soon. Uh, anyway, I hope this helped. I hope you guys take advantage. Hopefully it helps you take advantage of Android 4.2 and all the new goodness that there is to offer. So anyways, enjoy life. Peace.